Most people think that making risotto rice needs to be a long time consuming process. And in some ways they're right. <laughs> but surprisingly, risotto rice can be made ahead of time and still come out perfect and delicious. My friend, Chef Jamie Lareda from The Real Housewives of New Jersey is gonna show us how to do risotto in a very easy way ahead of time, right? That's right, Fausto. That you can impress your friends. Exactly. And dazzle your enemies. Exactly, risotto is one of these things that I learned when I was first training as a chef in Italy. I had the experience of traveling abroad, not abroad, but abroad. <laughs> and I was in an Italian restaurant with a very famous chef, Valentino Marcatelli, and he taught me how to make risotto, believe it or not, based on sound and feeling. So oh. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this in a two-part process. First okay. thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you how to get the risotto rice to the point where you can put it away, and then bring it out for another presentation to your guests that can be done in eight minutes. That's fantastic, let's do it. All right. So what do you have here? You have a hot pan with oil. I have a hot man and a hot pan oh. right here. <laughs> oh, so, go on. So basically, again, I talked to you about sound, uh -huh. right? So the first thing you wanna hear is, you wanna get your oil hot enough where you can hear the onion sizzle. So Hot, baby. do you feel that? Do you yeah. feel that right now? And it's a gentle sizzle. You don't want them to burn. The last thing you want in your risotto rice and your onions are brown specks. So we talk okay. about sound. This is the first sound you want to hear: a gentle hiss. And that's like how, a snake. Yeah, that's how you get your risotto, <laughs> you know, onions to the okay. point where they can slowly get translucent. Now that you've done that, you can raise the heat a little bit because now you're talking to it. So as soon as it gets up to a little bit of oh, a, onions, please pay attention. brown. As soon as it, get, it gets to the oh, point Oh, they're not where browning. We're just kind of making them translucent. We don't right? want them to get brown okay. because, think about it, the end result is that you're going to see white risotto with a bunch of brown flecks in it. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so once the, once the onions get up to a point where they start to sizzle and get hot, that's when you know that you're going to start the toasting process. Risotto is a process that takes 18 minutes, and from the first minute you start to the last minute you end, there needs to be a flow right onto the dish. So... What we're doing first is always make sure you have a hot stock. So you what kind of stock is this? This is half chicken stock and um, half uh, a little bit of wine. Okay. So I put about mm, probably a quart of chicken stock if I'm making it for about eight guests. And then I'll put about a, maybe a half a bottle of wine in here and then the other half I'll drink. This looks delicious. I could eat that just as soup right well, now. Well, you want to make sure that okay. that's hot. And then the other thing now, you're starting to hear it talk, right? It's saying to me, I'm hot. Now... You want to repeat that? Say, I'm hot. I'm hot, baby. I'm hot. No, I didn't say baby. I just said I'm hot. I'm hot. Okay, so now you begin the toasting process once you're hot. So I always measure it by the handful of guests. My risotto is I have eight guests. I'm going to put eight handfuls of risotto. That's about half an onion right there. Oops, seven. Mm -hmm. That's eight. And so if now, you guys want to know what the recipe, you can go to feastofun.com and follow uh, Chef Jamie Lareda's easy risotto recipe. And this is not the first one. I wanted to begin my cooking classes with risotto. Why? Because you're going to learn something about cooking. So today, we've got the toasting process happening. Okay. So I slowed it down just a little bit, but you can raise the heat and get this to be done faster because it's going to take more than 18 minutes because I'm showing you. Normally, I can raise the heat at this point and you can begin the toasting process. The thing that makes risotto work is that the, when you add your stock, your hot stock. Should I stir it sure. while you're talking? Yeah, you always want to okay. be, again, I want you to feel too. Okay. Feel, feel the weight of that risotto. Let me do it. Let me do Very it. Good. Feel so, the weight of it. Just the weight of it behind the spoon. Ooh. Okay. So you know well, this is also like. a really good spoon. Now, I want you to talk about the, uh, the metal pan, the fact that it's a nonstick pan, uh, that it is a stainless steel pan. Here. Yeah, I'm... I'm uh, you know, as a chef, I like high quality things and I always use these heavy all clad pots. And as a, you know, risotto is the kind of thing that you can control the heat with. This, yeah. These high quality pots, um, they're just better conductors of heat. And even though for the purposes of the, this video, we're using an electric uh, a range, a little stove yeah. top thing. I've made this. You prefer to cook with gas. I prefer, it's fat, yeah, I do. It's, again, it's all about the energy, right? Think about heat as energy and it going through the pan. So now, we're going to get back to the risotto. And what's happening okay. now, if we were on a little bit of a higher flame... This the, is as hot as it can get, baby. Right, so what's going to happen is <laughs> you want to get the rice yeah. to absorb the, the stock. So by toasting it, it's opening up the pores on the actual each grain of rice. It, they open up and they get smoother as you get them toasted. You want these to become just very, very light a golden, golden brown. Nothing really past too much, which you see here. Okay. You're gonna to start to notice them actually physically toasting. 
And that's the good part about the hearing the lesson. Do you hear that sound? Yeah. Okay, so it's a different sound. It's more of a sizzle, right? Well, it's kind of like popcorn, right? It's kind of like popcorn? Yeah, it's like, it, well, because when I make a arroz con pollo, which is Ooh, Puerto you Rican, say, you say it's so Puerto rice Rican. and chicken. You said it's so dirty. I always tell my mother and, and my friends, it's like, you want to pre-roast the rice right. uh, to pull out some of the starch, and also it caramelizes it a little right. bit. So basically what's going to happen... Is, uh, I say it's like you're making popcorn with, with rice. It, it's true, and you, what we're doing is we're getting the kernels of of, uh -huh. of the grains of rice. You, you messed me up with the popcorn, I, I said kernels. But we want to get them to the point where... <laughs> the grains are rice. Yeah. What they're going to do is, when they're at the right point, uh -huh. when we put in that hot liquid, there's going to be a marriage that happens between the liquid and the starch. So all of a sudden, it's going to start to thicken and absorb really fast. And that's the point you want to get the rice to. So again, you know, getting back to a higher flame, you start to hear that. And you can almost hear a toasting like corn. Yeah. It's that noise. So Well, it, I, I, is, it, is it the same process as popcorn in the sense that there's a starch that is expanding and that's why we start hearing a, the, the snaps? Well, what's happening really is that the pores of the rice are shrinking. They're getting mm -hmm. like stimulated, you know, so that sound is, a, is the coating of the oil and the heat the transfer of the heat. So there's a, a little bit of a crackle in there. But you, as you as you cook over, a, like if we were on a fire, again, 18 minutes. This may take longer, but we're going to deal with it. Um, you're going to start to notice that the rice moves easier behind okay. the spoon. I asked you to feel the weight sure, of it can before. I try, it try it again. It feels like it's uh, giving me more resistance. Is that supposed to be that way? Actually, it's when you first get to the point now, it should actually feel like you have more air in it because it's getting lighter. So we're still, again, you know, the I'm compensating the sure. the recipe a little bit because of, there's not a high heat source under here and this thing doesn't work that Let me turn well. up this uh, stock here too. Okay. So now, again, so it's about getting the grains to absorb uh, the moisture. So you're going to hear another sound when the stock hits the pan. That's the other sound. You want to make sure um, when you put your liquid in that it's hot enough where it really creates that sizzle. And the way you can really know that it's coming, if you can understand this, is that the rice gets lighter and lighter and lighter, almost to the point where, yeah, you're gonna feel a significant difference between what you felt before. Okay. Go ahead, try it. Oh yeah. You know, so it gets a lot more airy. Yeah, it's like popcorn. Okay, so now yeah. it's in the toasting process. So this is very close to us adding its uh, the liquid. When it starts to be really, really easily moving, and it I'm should take as, about, sure. that's like, on the right flame, by the way, that takes um, probably about four minutes between the, the time you start and between the time it's ready for the stock. So, so and think I'm about noticing here minutes. that the rice is also changing color; it's right. getting lighter. Okay, so that's what I call the blonde point. You know, went from white to blonde, and you know how great a blonde, a real. <laughs> this is like Marilyn Monroe blonde that we're going for. You know, it's a little bit golden, but like almost platinum, right? You okay. don't want it to go beyond platinum. I'm talking in your drag queen language. Oh, you yes. Don't, you, want, you don't want it to go beyond platinum because then you become Beyonce or somebody else, right? <laughs> so you got to be Marilyn. Okay. Right? So now feel it. Airy, right? Airhead. Yeah, <laughs> this looks great. Okay, so now you have a hot rice Now here. this is the same way for, no matter what kind of risotto, the, this process is identical for all of it. This, yeah, I so mean, there's far, right? a lot of people, just so you know, there's, you can use arborio rice. There's another rice called car carnaroli rice. Yeah. Um, the difference is just the quality of the rice. Um, just the regular risotto rice that you find in the store. Normally, I use the ones in the bulk section because they move faster than the ones on the shelf sometimes, especially in Italian neighborhoods. Um, look for arborio rice. And what uh, kind of uh, champagne or wine or what do we put? Ooh. This is my new Chef Jamie Larita Prosecco. So normally I use like any white wine that's in the refrigerator, something you open that's really maybe, I don't know, not your favorite, you can yeah. use for cooking risotto. A great Chardonnay, of course you can pour a great wine in a great risotto, I normally do. But um, you can use really any white wine. Today I've never done this before, but we're going to do it. There's a lot of things we're going to change today that I've never done. You know, you're the, I first heard and learned about Prosecco through you. Oh really? Yeah, I've okay. never heard. What exactly is the difference between Prosecco and say like white wine? It's the grape. I mean, we're actually using the Prosecco grape here, okay. and um, there's a, a region that it comes from that's mm -hmm. different, that makes them all together different, and it's mostly known as a sparkler, so. So this actually has yeah, it's, it's, in yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's got, it's sparkling. So 
Normally, I wouldn't use my Prosecco. Actually, it's the first time I've used my Prosecco for cooking. <clears throat> I've got a frog in my throat. Get it out. <laughs> we'll drink some of your Prosecco. Right? Listen. You hear that sound? If you don't hear that sound, if you don't hear that sound, then you've done something wrong. Again. That smells really good. Okay, so now you don't want to use too much wine. You just want yeah. to deglaze all of the starch. And the first thing that's going to get absorbed into this risotto PS is the wine. So you're going to see it start to dissipate. Sure. And, and how much uh, uh, Prosecco or white wine should we be adding here? Just, just enough until you stop hearing the sound. Okay. You know, again, based on sound. That's how you know. You can do this really quickly just based on sound. So now you pour it in your Prosecco. It stops sizzling. Now you're watching. There's a little bit of starch being created on the bottom of the pan right there. Do you see those white streaky things that looks like, um, I don't know, something white and streaky? You see that starchy there? <laughs> <laughs> Your metaphor got, uh, yeah. Well, that's what you want to look for. So now we can start, it's very simple, based on sound. You hear that? It started to sizzle again. I hope this is making sense. This is making sense. Okay, so now really you hear exciting. it, you hear it, boom. You do it until it shuts up. So you're putting them like enough about a stock, cup at a time? Enough, enough stock so you don't hear it anymore. Now the sound went away. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know that this is working. You know, Jamie, this is just like my husband, Mark. I give him enough wine till he shuts up. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. I like that. So back to the, uh, sorry, Mark. Back to the, uh, back to the Mark's dish. actually running the camera. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, Rich, what do you think about that comment? Uh, they can't hear I, you. The, yeah. the microphone's pointing over here. Okay. So now, you're only going to, yeah. we're going to do this in a two-part process. I'm going to get you guys to the point where your risotto can actually be stopped. You're going to stop the cooking process. And maybe you're doing this on a Thursday night for your dinner party on a Saturday night. We're going to stop the cooking process now. I'm going to show you how to do that and then put it away and then come back to you and finish the dish as if you were the guests in eight minutes or less. Is this how most restaurants make risotto? Because I don't imagine them spending 25 minutes no, making so risotto This is what I'm telling you. When I worked in the restaurants, what we yeah. used to do was we used to get all through this process, through the toasting process, the, st the starch process, all that. And we save it again. I told you the, the, the perfect risotto is 18 minutes, so you, you have like 20 minutes to make this dish. We're going to get you past 10 or 12 minutes. This way you can stop it and then reheat it and create it for your guests in eight or less. Now I'm noticing that the fluid here is also getting cloudier. Again. We talked about the starch, yeah. right? That's yeah. the starch. You always want to have that in risotto. Actually, we are creating the perfect starch right here. I'm very proud of this starch. Now, again, you start to hear it complaining, right? Like you, Mark. It's starting to complain again. Time to give it more stock or wine. Again, every time you hear that sound, you want to give it, you want to feed it. And that's how I do it. So if I'm doing other things in the kitchen, this is why we do it. It's not just because I'm crazy. It's the sound is telling us that. Uh, oh, when, you just got the memo? <laughs> well, I'm just repeating what you're saying. So okay. It drives so we're cooking home. based on sound. There's going to be a point yeah. where, there's going to be a point where this is going to stop complaining, and that's when you know you can finish it. Okay. So, this is about. Let's pretend we're on that fire. This should be around your seven or eight minute point in the entire okay. recipe. Remember, you can turn up the flame. Remember to listen to it and communicate it with it, with it like we're doing. And at what point do we stop the process? Well, you're going to hear the rice, I told you. You're going yeah. to hear those bubbles. As yeah. soon as that starch gets thick enough, it's not going to sound like that. It's going to say, yo, I'm almost ready. Okay. You know? I'm curious to, to hear the difference. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Now, again, now here I am learning in Italy, this crazy Italian guy teaching me this, and I don't oh, even speak right Italian, ahead. and I'm trying to understand what the fuck he's talking about. Either you have to listen <laughs> to the rice. I'm like, make love to the rice like it's a woman. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I like, it's a man. Uh, yeah, and there I was. I wasn't cute. Just, I wasn't cute at all. I was this American boy living in Italy. It was really rough. How old were you? I'm talking like... Like 18? No, 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 no. It's not that, it's not that polluted. Yeah. Um, probably 30. Like oh, when really? I just turned okay. 30. So no. ages ago. Yesterday. <laughs> Today's my birthday. Don't abuse me like oh, that. Oh, happy birthday, well, by you. the way. Well, I'm surprised you didn't know. You know? <laughs> I did know. So anyway, let me tell the story. Yeah. The thing is, is that I'm living in Italy. Uh -huh. I've got like, seriously, the dream life. Got an apartment, all these hot Italian men and women around me. You know, I don't speak the language. I'm white, big blue eyes, and a mullet. I was a target, a moving target. It was great. <laughs> is, was this before or after you were working for Madonna as her stylist? Oh, way before, way before. Yeah, this is in my beginning, after I graduated culinary school. Yeah. I got a scholarship to go to Italy. Uh -huh. And at the end of the day, it was like a miracle that I even got it. Because when I started culinary school, I was scared to death. 
But uh, yeah, I want to. So you've probably made because you've worked for some big names: uh, Aerosmith, Sarah McLaughlin. Sarah who? McLaughlin. How do you say that? I don't know. Anyway, uh, po- the police yeah, sting, and correct. it's like, how many celebrities have you actually made this dish for? Well, this one in particular dish, no one, because we're testing a recipe here. So I've never made. Well, this I mean, but I'm for. saying like risotto. Oh, yeah. Who have you made okay, risotto? Okay, so totally. For? I mean, for the red hot chili peppers, for. Did you make red hot chili risotto for yeah, the red hot? Of course I did. Um, <laughs> for on the first day. They're like no cayenne in no. the food. <laughs> when I show up. They, they got red hot chili pepper. Everything was on the menu. Can you imagine? I mean, if I was that gay. That would have been kind of funny. But I actually kind of did. Well, it was funny with them. No, yeah. they were so cool. I did the eating right for your blood type diet for them. Oh. And they all ate different things. But I always set this really cool environment for them. And because they're so cool, they inspired me to get cooler. And that's how they started my career with designing backstage. Because they oh, allowed really? me to do it. Yeah. So, okay, so uh, now we're you still- made this for Sarah, though. Yes, I've made it multiple times. It's in my cookbook for Sarah McLaughlin. Yeah. Uh, we have a cookbook called Plenty. and it, She loves a, animals. She does. How about that commercial? <laughs> right? I mean, Ruins on, my, I start crying every time I see that. Ad. That Sarah McLaughlin commercial Will like, puts me away. Remember me. <laughs> all the puppies. A, I went to all a the puppies who are like their heads service. are tilted and they're all looking at you with like brown and like, like they never take a picture of. A yeah. happy puppy. There should be a happy puppy in those commercials at some point. Just I went to, to a, a friend's better. memorial service and they were playing Sarah McLaughlin's song. You so sound like a duck. duck. How am I supposed to pronounce her you, name? I want to tell you what you said. You go Sarah <laughs> McLaughlin. I know because I don't know how to pronounce Is it because you're from another country? <laughs> Sarah McLaughlin. I'm putting this guy in charge of my risotto. Can you believe it? Okay, What's so now. The, but so anyways, yeah, her music is like a really powerful and emotional. Okay, so the reason yeah. why, you, listen to the sound. Remember that big, loud yeah. sound? You heard? Now you don't hear it. If we were taking this back to 18 minutes and we weren't stopping, this would probably be another six minutes based on how I know what it sounds like. It's a different sound. So what we're doing here is we're going to shut everything off. And this is the point where you actually can take it off the stove. And so how do a, I know that this is a good time to stop? I'm still not getting that. Okay, so... Yeah. The, the, the bubbles and the sound tells you that this has a lot of starch in it. Okay. Another really quick, easy way is to take a grain of rice, just like this, and okay. taste it. Based on the al dente, mm-hmm. you see? It's still got a little bit of bite. You want that. You need that. So you want to make sure to taste it. At this so point. I wouldn't feel comfortable serving this to people. You're not going to serve yet. it to this okay. because this is eight minutes away from service. Okay. What we're doing now is we're going to take it off. So again, it's Wednesday and your dinner party Saturday. We're going to take it off, cool it down, and then you're going to be able to bring it back out on Saturday night and create a fresh tasting risotto for your guests. So right now, at this point... So this point, is a good point to end the yeah, video? you want to see those large bubbles, okay. a really thick starch, not a lot of sound. That tells me I'm about 8 to 10 minutes into the dish. So far for me, I'm at a 10-minute risotto point where I know I have 8 minutes not to ruin risotto. You follow so, me? So stay tuned for part 2 of the video where Chef Jamie Larita shows us how to finish the risotto the next day, if you made this ahead of time, right? Exactly. Awesome. And then you could be the big chef on Saturday night. Ooh. And you know what? The next time we get together, you're going to be the chef. I'm going to watch and you're going to follow. So stay tuned because <laughs> I'm going to scare this man now on my birthday. <laughs>